You can uh, you can totally tell that I'm out of my element, right? Look at this. Look at this. This is not my thing at all. All right. This is Prosper. And I'm coming at you live from Melbourne, guys. And I'm a little bit early today because I've got some really, really exciting stuff happening in the afternoon. So I have to drive out of the office and then go. But seeing as if I'm consistent and I'm always showing up every single day um, at 2 p.m. so that I can give you a live, I thought I'd say um, um, give you this live a little bit earlier. Now, if this is your first time catching our Lunch and Learn, my name is Prosper Taruvinga, and I'm the founder and CEO of Live Long Digital. That is um, your done-for-you services, your SEO, um, Facebook ads, etc., etc., okay, where we actually help um, coaches, consultants, dentists, lawyers to market, scale, and brand their businesses so that they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, my... Matthew says, I have the skills, but not the electric guitar vision. <laughs> Great stuff. That was just a prop. Um, crap when it comes to playing instruments. The only musical instrument I can play is the iPod. All right. So <laughs> that's pretty much cool. So I'm coming in today talking about how you can actually create your one man show, your one man brand and literally stand out from the market and get people climbing all over each other to get your services. This is what the biggest problem a lot of entrepreneurs are facing right now because A, there's so much content on the internet, B, there's so much people providing that content, and C, nobody knows what they're doing and nobody knows what they can actually provide, um, you know, and what they serve and things like that, all right? So it's not going to be an easy um, hurdle for you to actually be heard, seen, or people to share, like, and comment on your stuff because the internet is now a congested highway. Now, Brandon Tan says, ha ha, I love it. The iPad is easy one. Of course, that's the only musical instrument I can play, but that does not mean I cannot try. Okay, so today we're literally just talking about how to actually create a brand that people will remember, how to create a buzz around what you do, and how to let people know what you do and why they should care. Because those are the only things you really should concentrate on, that people are actually understanding your message, people are actually your target market, and they can remember and talk about you, um, you know, when they're at a barbecue or during the weekend etc etc okay so this is where a lot of people get it wrong and if you don't do certain things to craft your brand and to be intentional about getting people to know you it's going to be difficult for you to actually stand out or people to even know who you are buy your stuff etc etc okay long gone are the days where you could just throw out an ad and then people just look at it and then follow uh, you know, whatever channels they are. It still works to a certain degree, but people need to know, like, and trust you. And as we all know, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust. Imagine yourself maybe going to the shops to buy toothpaste, all right? And then there's a new toothpaste that comes in and it's called Buzz whiter than before and 10 dentists trusted you've never heard of it you've never seen it anywhere else but it's standing out you know on the shelf a are you gonna pick it just because it's there two are you gonna pick it because of price or are you just gonna pick a toothpaste brand that you know that you've trusted for ages and that you know your mom will not question you or your wife won't question you about it all right so at the end of the day it's it's what you are putting out there that you want people to relate back so that they can actually then see if you're the right kind of person to solve their problems, all right? So whether you're selling your expertise or you're the face behind your product or your brand, your image is the one that directly affects how customers are going to transact with your business, all right? Now, Steven Snedden says, choose your clients and friends, okay? At the moment... Your clients right now are now being derived from the people you're actually relating to, from the people you're creating stuff for. 
And most of them have to be your friends if your business entails them to be long-term clients. Because right now, you have a choice. The globe has opened up for us to actually pick and choose who we want to work for. No need for you, Stephen, to sit around and stick with people that don't serve you, people that don't trust you, people that don't really appreciate the kind of work you're putting in, etc., etc. Okay, so... This is what I'm saying. You want to make sure that, you know, when, even if you're selling your expertise or you're the, you're the person behind your brand, your image is what is actually directly affecting your customers' decisions to purchase, all right? And I want to help you create that brand when that brand is you, okay? So over the weekend, if you guys are following me and checking out what I'm doing, me and my best friend, Gift, we went out um, and we went and watched the movie by Tupac. Think what you made, that he was a gangster, etc., etc. But what I realized and what I saw when I was watching that is, first of all, Tupac branded himself to be a national, um, you know, leader amongst those people that were um, marginalized in that time of the American history. Then came on, I was a kid, I think about, I was about between 11 and 13 the first CD I ever bought was a Tupac Shakar CD, okay? What does that mean? He had so much influence, even if I wasn't affected by slavery or whatever oppression that was happening in the States, but his message got to me as a young black African that related to that message. So what I'm just trying to say here is it doesn't matter where you're at right now. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are. Your message, if it can reach and resonate to a market that's out there, which is ready to be receptive, you never know where your clients are going to come from. Okay? Uh, Tiff Smoother says, Tupac was a kid chasing his dream. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? So... He, he did all he could and he learned all he could, connected with the right kind of people because of his brand. How he represented himself, who he brought himself for people to meet, all right? Every single day, people want you to meet their representative. They are not bringing out their best because at the, what, what we're just trying to show people is that nice person so that people can like you. That's not who you are. That's not your brand. Your brand is your values. Your brand is your failures. Your brand is your dreams. Your brand is all your suspicions. Your brand is your fears. Your brand is your, the people that don't like you. That's who your brand is. Your enemies. Okay, so people would now then align with what you're doing because you share the same fears. People can align and understand your message because you share the same trajectory, you share the same path with them. All right, because right now it's difficult for somebody to 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 relate to somebody who who doesn't have a history or a story behind that sort of aligns with your visions or your your values. It's difficult. You know why? Because now we're exposed to a lot more people that we can tune to and listen to and get advice from. So you want your brand to at least represent something, stand for something and be there for those people that would literally, um, you know, find value from whatever it is that you're talking about or preaching. OK, so half the time, the reason why you are actually not getting business right now is because you are standing behind an avatar. Every single one of you guys is just coming in onto Facebook saying, OK, this is my business. You guys should look at that without bringing out who exactly you are. People want to relate to the person in you. People want to relate to Megan. People want to relate to Tiff. All right. People want to relate to the person who's going, who they're going to be paying money to. All right. If you look in the last 10, 15 years, there's been a lot of terrorist activities happening. And since I became a dad, I have become so particular as to who I am paying. All those terrorist activities are funded by somebody, by some sort of money. Okay, so you never know any one of these one-click wonder businesses, um, you know, what their next intention is. Why are they hiding their face? Are they also supporting those terrorists? Do you know what I mean? So you want to make sure that you, you don't leave anything to, to, to people's opinion or you don't leave people to start making their own conclusions. All right. You know, at the moment, you might be thinking, oh, OK, I'm not Donald Trump. 
I'm not Oprah, I'm not Michael Jordan, or I'm not, um, you know, Gary V, or I'm not Prosper, so I don't need to become a brand, all right? And you don't think of yourself as a brand. Guys, in my experience right now, the most successful entrepreneurs and a lot of business owners, they actually do create and become the brand of who the products become. Look at Steve Jobs, look at Elon Musk, look at um, any person that you can think of that has become the brand, all right? People are not hiding behind their products anymore. People are not hiding behind their websites. If you're not showing face and showing up and getting people to know who you are, you're missing out on the trust factor, all right? People have been so desensitized to copy and paste magicians that are out there. They really want to know that you know what you're talking about. So go out and actually create the brand that people can relate to. Right? People want to associate a brand with you know your experience. People want to associate your brand with your values. People want to associate your brand with your promise and what you live by and what you share. If you're not showing up for the people and if you're not representing yourself, your brand, your business, you're actually leaving a lot of money on the table and you're wasting our time, your time and internet space. All right. So, you know, chances are, you know, you might be good. You might have been working um, on your own and, and nobody really wanted to find out who exactly you are or chances are that you too, you know, more than your product or your service, People don't know who you are or what you serve, all right? Some people hide behind the brand just in case or hide behind a product just in case it, it doesn't work and then they still can, you know, show face and not be um, afraid to, to, to be a part and parcel of that brand. What you're doing there is you are limiting yourself from claiming that failure in the future, all right? Nobody wants clean uh, or, you know, overly polished things. People want things with cracks in them so that they can actually relate. So if you don't have a story, if you're not putting yourself out there and showing people that this is me, I'm like one of you guys, I'm not one of those corporate demagogues or a faceless business. I'm here, I'm trying to feed my daughter. How are they going to know how, you know, you're going to be helping them? All right. So more than more than your your product at the moment or more than your services, your brand is what your customers are actually buying. The who you are right now is what people buy. It's no longer your Facebook ads or anything else to that effect. Now, Angela Milan says, hey, Marcos Fernandez, my issues laid out in black and white. Uh, are you talking about in this video? Yeah. All right. So if you're doing it right, OK, your brand now starts becoming the heart and soul of your business and what ultimately allows you to actually stay visible and increasingly visible. Um, it, it, the, the world is becoming an invisible world, but if you really want to stand out, you actually have to become you. We are now tired and everybody is now tired of copycats, right? No, or one click wonders. People want to document, want to see you document your journey. So if you're not putting yourself out there as the brand called you, you are actually missing out or you're wasting time. Now, Steven says they are more interested in your failures. It's more real. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Nobody wants to see me showing up every single day just like I do and not know where I came from. You know, I constantly talk about my story of how I came to Australia and I had nothing. Every, a few people can actually relate to that story because right now you probably don't have people that know you, people that know your business, etc., etc. That is also part of branding because I'm like you and I'm also learning and I'm also trying to figure out all these things as I go. Do you know what I mean? So my story now becomes the heart and soul of my business and the more people get to know who I am, the more they would actually support my business and know that I'm the right kind of person who will take them from where they currently are because I've gone through that to where they want to be. So if you're not showing that in your messaging, in your content or in everything else that you're doing, guys, you're missing the point. All right. So as an entrepreneur who is behind your brand, there's a few things that I really want to suggest. Um, and like I said, um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be leaving pretty soon because, yeah, I've been invited to be part of a, a really interesting, interesting um, project that's happening in Melbourne. And because of my brand, I'm part of that, you know, um, 
chair that's happening there. All right, so Angela says, I don't want to be in the spotlight, but I see just uh, have to, gotta be me. That's not a problem. It's being seen to be the star that I have an issue with. Weird, but I got to the bottom of that. All right. Cool. Uh, well, half the time, maybe your business doesn't entail you to, to be seen or to be in the spotlight, but at least get people to know your story, get people to know your why, get people to know why they should do business with you. I'm not saying be in the spotlight, I'm not saying be a celebrity, but I'm saying get people to know, like, and trust you. All right. If they don't, it's going to be hard for them to convert. All right. The one thing that we are actually looking out for um, in any business right now is be original. Originality, guys. All right. People celebrate originality more than anything else. All right. What makes you unique? Every single one of us has something that totally is different to a lot of people. What makes you unique? What makes you special? Okay, is it your voice? Is it your height? Your eye color? Is it the way you present yourself? Is it the way you dress? Are you, are you an athlete? Are you fluent in 500 different languages? Did you invent something? Do you have a patent? What's original about you? Okay, and whatever it is, you want to use that to your advantage. I just had an interview with uh, Jamie uh, Stanhouse. He's got a stutter. All right. And, and that would limit him from talking to a lot of people. But if you look uh, just below this video, I did an interview with him. 30 minutes we were talking and you won't even hear it. So if he had w waited and, and said nobody's going to listen to me just because I've got a starter, where would he be right now? OK, so imagine people like Barbara Streisand, you know, if she had a different nose, would, would, would we recognize her? People like Jay Leno. If they had a new chin or something else, you know, or Cindy Crawford, if she didn't have her mole, everybody in, in remembers the original. But the copycats, they just blend in together. You know why? Because they don't know how to um, make it real or, or, or continue with whatever it is they're copying. All right. So differentiate yourself and stand out from the pack, guys. All right. You are remarkable. You've got so much talent that, than what the world gives you credit for. Okay, be remarkable and extraordinary and actually grab the attention of the people that you want to um, grab your attention so you get noticed. All right, good is not good enough. Were you great? If you're great at something, show the world that this is what it is. And when you exploit what makes you unique, people will remember your authentic brand. All right. If I cannot write, but I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm one of the biggest producing content uh, marketers out there. You know, I speak, somebody translates this for me or transcribes it for me. I'm using my talent, which is speaking. All right. So at the end of the day, don't let a few things stop you just because, you know, you feel like you're not going to be adequate. Utilize and maximize on what you're really, really good at. All right. And in the process, try and be creative, guys. Like I'm saying, there's a lot of one click wonders out there or has beens or people that are just, you know, they were there. Grand opening, grand closing. All right. How do you want people to think or how do you want people to feel or act or react, you know, after interacting with you versus what your competition is putting out there? So you got to be authentic, be creative, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Ask yourself this, what sort of words or, you know, a combination of words or thoughts come to people's mind when, when they, they're sitting at a barbecue and describing you? I always talk about the barbecue scenario. You know why? Because at the barbecue, people talk about a lot of stuff. But when a brand gets to be barbecue topic, then you've made it. And you want to be amongst there in the totem pole of stuff that is spoken about at a barbecue. Okay, and don't forget to talk about me on your next barbecue. That's an order. <laughs> All right. So how do you want to be described? You need to foster those, um, you know, th those conversations. You need to give people what to talk about. All right. I don't know if you've heard of a guy called um, George Washington Cover. You know, he, he once said that, you know, when you can do common things in life in an uncommon way, you will command the attention of the world. 
All right. If you can do certain things that people think are ordinary, but you do them extremely ordinary, better than anybody else, you will command the attention. And we all have those things. What are those one, two or three things that you do extremely better than everybody else? Bring them into the arsenal of your content. Bring them into the arsenal of your business and how you relate to your customers. All right. But in the process of you trying to put yourself out there, etc., etc., don't go on lying that you can play the guitar when when you uh, when you can't. See, <laughs> I'm crap at this, but I think this is one of the yeah. It's quite an expensive piece. I could take a photo with one of these, and then you know a photo won't show that I can do it. So. Let me tell you something, guys. It turns out that telling the truth about, you know, what you are and what you're not can actually save your day and it's actually quite refreshing. All right? Because when you don't lie about what you're capable of, you, you, you're you authentic. You know, you're not going to hide from people because at the end of the day, if they ask you to talk about something and they ask you if you're an expert in that area, like what Stephen is saying, then you can show up and say, yeah, I am. Do you know what I mean? So don't go out there and try and be what you're not. Just be who you are and, and people will actually adore that a whole lot more than you trying to pretend to be somebody you ain't. All right? Okay, who would have thought that in 2017 that just being brutally honest will actually be the only strategy you can actually do to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable? You know, all this time we had people that were just copying and pasting uh, statuses. Now, where are they? They don't show up on live. They're not showing up on video, etc., etc. You know why? Because they were lying to us. All right. So you don't want to be part of that bandwagon. Now, Angela says, thanks, mate. Have a great day. Always a bomb on content. Thanks for being you. Well, thank you. This is my authentic self. And it's a Monday and I'm really, really excited. All right. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> oh, this is exciting. I've been I've been brought into a panel of people that are creating a beer of the future. So this is so exciting for me at uh, I think at two o'clock or so I have to be leaving. So that's why I had to drop in this video and then uh, jump on and, and go meet the people at the panel. It's exciting. It's because I created the brand and now, you know, it's paying off. People now want my opinion. You know why? Because they now trust my, they value what I say. They value my audience because I created and I was authentic. All right. So you want to be true to who you are, your values, and don't do things just because everybody else is doing them. Okay. All right. So, you know, because nowadays there's so many choices out there, you know, there's every category. Customers tend to choose brands that they trust the most. People do business with those that they know, like and trust. So let your brand be known for speaking the truth. And guys, don't lie about what you're capable of or over deliver. I mean, over promise and under deliver. OK. All right, so you want your customers to advocate for you and talk about you at the at, 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 at the barbecues there. All right, people, obviously, I mean, people don't always want to hear the truth, but they'll respect you for telling it. That's one thing for sure. They will respect you a whole lot more for telling it. If you mess up something or if you don't deliver the results that you promised, own up and say, hey, guys, sorry, I did a boo-boo here. All right, and people will respect you a whole lot more there. And last but not least, guys, no matter what you're going to be doing within your business, try and be relevant. Make sure that your message is sticking to the same market that you really want to reach out to. And whatever media you're using is relevant to what you want to portray your brand to be. All right. Brands are not created in some sort of a vacuum. You know what I mean? They require loads and loads of attention, care, feeding, nurturing. You cannot just place it over here and say, oh, you know what? This is not going to be my brand. I think it's all done. All right. So the process of you creating a brand called yourself isn't unlike anything for what, what a company can do, guys. You have to develop a, a mission statement. You have to develop a vision. You have to have a unique positioning and so on. All right. And you got to be relevant at every single step of one of those. 
So you must actually define your brand and be able to communicate it and also review it periodically just to see if you're still relevant and you're still current and people are still wanting what you're talking about. Yeah? Do you know what I mean? In, 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 in like 1985... B best, you know, the things that were going on there were cigarettes, drinking, um, viscose clothes, leather, mullets, you know, wild ch kids, etc., etc. But in 2017, it's yoga, it's family, it's spiritual, it's, you know, loving, giving more, abundance, all those things. So you want to make sure that, you know, your branding, your purpose, your visuals, your, your, your verbal identification is actually also fully integrated with all these components, all right? What worked yesterday is probably not going to work today, but your brand is still the same, all right? So you'll need to have a big brand positioning, find out what brand architecture you need to put together just to make sure that it resonates clearly with your current customers. Don't just go out there and expect people to like, you know, just because they liked it in yesteryear. All right. So it has to be that. And once you've found your sweet spot, try and be consistent. All right. I'm sorry today. I'm a little bit inconsistent. This live is normally supposed to be 30 minutes and uh, I'm supposed to be at 2 p.m. AEST. But I came in a little bit earlier because... I'm going out and doing some stuff, all right? So for you to actually develop a message that's cohesive and people will will, will continually uh, be in it, you got to leave your brand. You got to eat your brand. You got to sleep your brand, all right? So don't just hook up with whatever message you're going to put out there. You actually have to marry that brand, Okay, it's not just going to be, you know, a one night stand that, oh, today I feel like going on Facebook. Whatever you're doing, whether you're with your family or whatever, what then that does is it creates a work-life balance which you don't have to be exhausted while doing your work. All right, so even if your, 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 your kids need to be in and amongst that, your family needs to know what you're doing. And I've got videos prior that will tell you how to actually involve your family so that they understand what you're doing and they can also help you move your brand forward. It takes a lot of time, a lot of patience for you to actually build all these brands. All right, I was watching yesterday uh, people that train for Mr. Olympia and, you know, they train for four years just so that they can be judged for four seconds. All right, so it's exactly how it works with brands here. You know, we are working a lot behind the scenes and it takes somebody four seconds just to see what you've created and maybe they like it or not and then they keep scrolling. Okay, so, you know, one of those, you know, people that win Olympic gold medals, Olympics come in maybe every four years, or Olympics come in maybe every two or so years, I'm not quite sure of the frequency, but people are training, not because they know Olympics are there tomorrow, they train 10 years before, so that they can win uh, the, the games of, of a year that they've put out away. All the Grammy Awards, there's years and years and years of work that goes prior to somebody winning a Grammy and saying, thank you, I'd like to thank God or my mom or my friends, all of that stuff, okay? So at the end of the day, creating your own brand, you got to be consistent, you got to be relevant, you got to be honest, guys, and you got to be creative, and you have to be original, all right? People are tired of copycats out there. And at the end of the day, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, people can also tell it. All right. If you remember anything else, remember this suggestion. It makes it makes up for a lot of all the shortcomings that that I've mentioned above, guys. OK, everybody loves to work with people who are passionate about what they do. All right. It makes life a lot more fun and a lot more interesting. So build your brand around what you actually enjoy. And remember, I'm not going to put this um, um, in my own words. I think there's a guy called John Ruskin. Look him up and somebody can type that out. When you love and, you know, you know, you know, when what you love and your skill work together, expect a masterpiece. All right. When what you love and your skills are working together, expect a masterpiece. That's what uh, John Ruskin says, all right? I'm quoting that. So I hope you, you know, I've convinced you that, 
you know, even those great brands do in fact start off as a personal brand, okay? Your brand is going to be the compass, you know, that should provide a foundation to actually help you connect, you know, with your target audience and the people that are actually going to be paying you money to be relevant, all right? So you want to make sure you're creating and relating for them every single time. Whether it's your name, and you know, or maybe you're doing it, whatever is on the door, or you're going door to door knocking on Facebook ads, whatever it is, it always starts with you at the top. Okay, you know, I personally have made a conscious decision to 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 name my company after me and what I'm about: live long digital, as in live long and prosper. All right. Yet I firmly and, 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 and you know, you, the, the, the firm strongly believes in me as the founder. And I'm guessing your firm will be yours as well. The more you start doing things that you love, the more you start doing things you're skilled for, a masterpiece will ensue. OK, guys, even the best brands need a strong product behind the service behind them. So the execution is now then the key to success. Never, never, never. I'm going to repeat this again. Never forget that you are your own brand and you got to leave it 24-7. I'm out of here. Guys, enjoy the rest of your week.